Right, welcome back. So, this is the Wars of the Roses uh, army. It's uh, playing with Lion Rampant rules. Um, as I said before, we've got the Perses, uh, led by Thomas Percy on the left. They are trying to stop and destroy a mercenary force, um, which have been hired by the Neville family. And the Nev these mercenaries are basically trying to cross the board, get off the other side, and the Perses are trying to stop them by destroying them. Now, Lion Rampant, as I said already, it is a small retinue game. Uh, both these armies are around 24 points, which is probably about the biggest you want for a Lion Rampant game because there's a lot of moving individual figures. I've taken them out of the movement trays that I had them in. Um, so this is starting to probably send um, Hail Caesar players bonkers now, seeing them not in formations. But formation doesn't matter in Lion Rampant because every single model is an individual man. It's one-to-one -one scale. Uh, so formation doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're, what formation they're marching in or they're in. Okay, um, it makes no it makes no effect on the rules. Uh, shooting is in any direction. Attacking and movement is in any direction. Um, you cannot shoot through uh, other units, okay, or through anything that blocks line of sight. That is the only rule in terms of shooting. Uh, cover cover uh, adds one point to a unit's armor if it's being shot at. And uh, rough ground, which this hill is rough ground, this will add one armour to uh, cover as well um, for any units that are being attacked. Okay, so rough ground basically, uh, if you charge a unit in, that's in rough ground, they get plus one on their armour. Okay, that's just the rules. I'm not sure why, probably because it's more difficult to fight in that way. Okay. So, I'm going to play through. Now, if you're not familiar with the rules, don't worry. You might pick it up as we go along. Uh, basically, it's very similar to uh, Hail Caesar in that it's activation rolls. You roll to activate each unit rather than division uh, or unit in your uh, army. If you fail the activation roll, your turn ends. Okay, so it's quite tough in that sense. There are commanders. Uh, the Percy commander is the guy at the back there. With the um, well, the guy on the right hand side with the black and red helmet that is Thomas Percy, and the commander of the uh, mercenaries is the guy with the flag at the front. Okay, uh, he's a Swiss uh, pipeman. Okay, so the commander has to stay with the unit, he cannot leave the unit that he's assigned to. Um, anyone within 12, any other units within 12 inches get plus one on their courage roll, okay, if they need to roll for courage. Um, I'll, as we play through, I'll kind of explain the rules as we go. The commanders do have abilities. These are both um, basically commander rank, okay. So if we look at the leader roles, these guys are both of commanding rank, okay, seven. So each turn they can re-roll a failed move attack or shoot test Okay, within uh, any unit within 12 inch of the leader's model. So they can't re-roll their activation test. Um, some better commanders allow units to do that, but I thought I'd have both these guys around. Thomas Percy, he's going to be a decent commander, but not that brilliant. And the mercenary commander is pretty good, but not uh, a wonderful either. Okay, so I thought I'd keep it even. As I said already, Start of each turn, apart from the first turn, I'm going to roll a d6. If it's 1 to 3, then it starts snowing, which means that bows are limited to 12 inches. And um, uh, anyone being shot at gains plus 1 armour. Okay. Um, rough terrain basically reduces movement by half. Nothing is rough, uh, apart from the hills, if anyone tries to climb into the hills. Um, Walls are um, cover and will provide plus one armour if a unit is behind it, um, but it will not provide cover from shooting if a unit is three inches or more behind it. Okay. Uh, movement for um, infantry is pretty much six inches. Movement for cavalry is ten inches. Some cavalry are 12 inches, lighter cavalry, but both these cavalry are... Um, 10 inches. Right, I'm just going to have to let the cat in because it's snowing and for some reason he's outside. Two seconds. Uh, 
Okay, I'm back. Right. So, just going to start with basically rolling for initiative, Percy's first, and then we'll start the uh, movement. So, Percy's a two. Mercenaries a two. <laughs> Try again. Percy's a two. Mercenaries a two. All right, okay, I can see how this is going to go. Percy's a four. Mercenaries are two. Come on, Percy. Right, so Percy's go first. So I'm going to try and activate the Percy units. Remember, they've got infantry there, okay, blocking the road. But they've also got some heavy cavalry that are coming from the north. Shit. Coming from the north and uh, might be causing problems. Okay, so... What should I do? Let's, um, right, I'm going to leave the archers where they are because the archers are basically defending the exit to the, um, to the uh, board. So I'm going to leave the archers on that hilltop. I'm not going to move them at all. They're going to stay where they are. I'm going to move the um, billmen forward, I think. I'm going to command the billmen forward. So they're billmen. They are basically uh, sergeants. Okay, according to Lion Rampant, and they have a certain order. So, in order to move, they need a 5 plus. Need a 5 plus on 2d6 in order to move. 4, oh dear. Okay, <laughs> so Thomas Percy orders his billman forward, they don't hear him for some reason. And his movement stalls. End of his activation phase. Right, this is turn one, remember. Right, back to the mercenaries and the mercenary leader. Now, the mercenary leader sees the predicament that he's in. He can't, he can probably just about see the mounted, the heavy cavalry on the right hand side, um, the heavy horsemen, um, and he can obviously see the purses on the road ahead of him. What's he gonna do? If it was me, I would get my archers up into the rough ground on the right to start being defensive. So he's going to order his archers up into the rough ground. So over the fence, over the wall and up onto that hill. Now the wall is going to be uh, rough. Okay, it's going to slow them down and the rough ground is going to slow them down. So they're going to be half movement. So they're going to, they're going to try to make a, uh, a three inch uh, moving now you have in line ramp it you can't probably in same as how sees you got to declare what you're going to do before you make the roll okay so let's roll oh he makes it easily 11 okay um archers are archers are six plus to move okay they're slightly more difficult to order them to move then yeoman, okay, but they are going to move three inches over the wall. Now that's probably not going to get all of them over the wall and up into the hill, but they're going to try, okay? So, three inch movement over the wall, up into the hill. I would say probably we'll get most of them up onto the hillside. Oh, not even most of them. Okay, then they can't touch base, but they can um, all be together. So, they trying to get up that hill. They're slightly close to the crossbow, and then, but so what? Okay, so he succeeded, so he can keep going. So he's moving his archers up the hill into position, trying to keep them away from the cavalry, but also... Uh, getting them into a position where they can probably take take out the cavalry. Now, what should he do next? Well, the horsemen, what are they going to do? They might hang back slightly. I think he's going to order his own pikemen to move around the wall, go right, uh, your left, and move around the wall, and see if he can actually um, do something about the uh, horses defensively. So... Again, pikemen in this are basically foot, same as foot sergeants, so five plus to do this. Oh, he fails, okay, <laughs> he fails to order his own unit, okay. 
So that's turn one over. Okay, so failed activations on both parts. So the only people that have moved are the archers. Right. So, back to the purses. Now, I think at this point, um, we're going to move these uh, horsemen. I think they've got to get into the battle. They're probably fairly impetuous. Um, they, uh, they are pretty, um, you know, angry about everything that's happened. Um, they have something called wild charge, which means if they get within attack range, okay, uh, and they must test and activate to attack, okay. Uh, basically, they, they lose control and they will just charge into battle. All right, so if they get within 10 inch, inches, um, they don't get to make any other um, test other than an attack. And if they, if they make the attack, they will charge, okay. So they're going to move 10 inches. They can move a max of 10 inches, so I might just trot them forward, actually, uh, slightly. Okay, they need a 7 plus to move. They're even more difficult to order, probably because they're... Um, you know, they're noble horsemen, okay? So seven plus to move. Six, failed. Not doing very well, are we? Okay, so another failed movement. Okay, so the units failed to move. So the back to the mercenaries again. This is turn two, and only one unit has moved so far. Okay, back to the mercenaries, mercenary uh, commander. He's going to move his unit forward, we'll try to, his pipeman, six, yes, okay, needed a five plus, so he's going to move forward, so six inches, if you can, around the corner, now it doesn't have to, the only rules of coherency here are that they stay away from base contact and they're not three inches uh, uh, closer to another unit, so he's just basically going to move around this unit six inches, okay which will put him in front of the wall here. Oh. Okay. Right, I can move all the others up behind him. So. So, some success there. So he moves his uh, pipeman up to behind the wall, okay? Ready to take the cavalry if they need to. Right, who's he gonna order next? He's gotta start getting his um, own billmen, okay, at the back, and his gunners up. He's gonna try and get his gunners up to the walls. You can pre-measure in Lion Rampant, but before he does that, I think he would order his um, scourers, these guys, okay, um, to attack the archers. So he's going to order the scourers to try and come down here and go straight into these archers on the left. To try to basically shock them out of position, okay, try to do that. So we're talking uh, light cavalry, okay. We're talking mounted sergeants, basically, with these guys. And these guys are on a five plus to move. Seven, okay, they do it. So, it's a 10 inch movement. They're gonna basically charge down the side of the, the road, okay? Attacking the, uh, coming in to attack the archers, okay? So, 10 inch movement. Right, so the light horse 
basically ignore the heavy cavalry. I mean, who wants to charge them? And they're going to make their way down the side of the wall and see if they can plow straight into these archers and try to limit the defensive uh, capability of the Perses because his archers are retinue archers. They're elite, okay? They're plus one to... Uh, they get they get to re-roll missed rolls, basically. Um, and, yeah, so it's going quite well for the mercenaries. They're getting to uh, roll all their... Activate all their units at the minute. So let's have a look at another unit. So what do you want? I think he wants to bring his gunners up to this wall. Okay. Bring the gunners up to the wall. Okay, we're talking. So gunners, there are no gunners in line ramp. There's no rules for them, but I'm using crossbowman rules for gunners. Uh, this line rampant is kind of a little bit earlier, kind of Baron's Wall retinue size uh, stuff. It's not probably really intended for Wars of the Roses, but it works okay. Um, so to move, they need to move on a 6 plus. Okay, 6 plus. 10. Good. Okay, so the gunners get to move as well. So 6 inches movement up to the wall. So it's looking like this uh, mercenary guy is actually pretty good commander he's ordered his uh, men around pretty well here okay just stagger them slightly so they can start to position themselves behind the wall so they want to get into a position so that they can start to bring fire onto the billmen of the purses that are going to be marching up this road in a few minutes time if they ever activate that is so activation is going well so the horsemen are coming down inside the wall go straight into the um, archers the pikemen are taking a position against the wall side the art the uh, mercenary archers are running up into the hill to try to bring fire down onto the cavalry and anyone else so the billmen billmen uh, at the very back i need to get them up so that they start to actually make a difference the billmen are foot sergeants. They are they're five plus to move as well. So five plus. Oh, fail! Disaster. He fails to order his billmen. Okay. After a nice run of movement, uh, we've got a failed roll. So, we're now to turn three. Now, what I did say is we're going to start to roll for um, snow. So, on a one to three, um, it starts snowing. It doesn't start snowing. Okay, that's good for the, um, for the purses because they've got the advantage with the missiles. Okay, so the purses, can he actually order somebody to move? He needs now to really get up this road. He's going to leave his archers where they are. He's going to get his uh, billmen now into position so they can take the charge of the light horsemen and protect the archers. So, his billmen, foot sergeants again, five plus to move, five did it. Okay, excellent. So, orders his uh, billmen. So, his billmen, six inch movement. Up the road, six inch movement up the road, uh, trying to get into position to defend against these um, horsemen. So line rampant frontage makes no difference whatsoever. Okay, they're simply a unit of models. Okay. You can attack from any direction, shoot in any direction. Everything is 360. Okay. So Billman are now getting in front of the archers, uh, making it a bit more difficult for the cavalry to try to take them out. 
This is turning to a defensive position for the Perses. Suddenly finds himself on defence rather than the attack. So let's have a go with. Hmm, are those archers in range? No, way out of range. They're just out of range. Uh, right, so the archers can't shoot yet. Okay, you can only do one of several actions. You can either only shoot, move, attack, okay, or issue a challenge or rally in a, in a round. You can't move and shoot, okay? So the archers can't come off that hillside and then shoot. So they're going to stay where they are. Uh, the men at arms, including the, um, the uh, Thomas Percy, are going to try to activate and move forward as well. Okay, oh, that's a four. They fail. Uh, they need a five plus, so that's the end of his movement again. Okay, not going very well, is it, for the purses? Okay, so does it start snowing? Yeah, uh, four, yes. Oh, no, it's one to three, sorry. No, it doesn't start snowing. Okay, so back to the uh, mercenaries on this side. So the obvious thing now is for these um, mounted guys to basically run into the charge, into the bill, billman. What I'm going to do first though, I think I'm going to move my archers up onto the hillside. Okay, I'm going to finish that, that movement. So the archers, they basically need a, um, I think they need a six plus. Yeah, they need a six plus to move. Yeah. Okay, so put the archers up on the hillside. Okay, so they're now basically the guys at the front, are, uh, they're basically three inches now to get up onto this hill. So they're kind of coming around the hill. So what we'll do is we'll position them now here. So they're getting into quite a nice position now. So from being from being stuck around the hill, they're now in a position where they can shoot at the Cavalry, the horsemen, as they come around the hillside. So there's going to be a volley of fire when the cavalry come around that hillside. Okay, so I'm liking that. Right, okay. So the commander of this unit, he needs to, he still needs to get his uh, billman up, he still needs to move his crossbowmen, they're not. But I think, the thing with the crossbowmen, I think they should basically get behind the wall and then they can also shoot at the, uh, at the unit. So to get the crossbowmen behind the wall, okay. Uh, again, six plus for the crossbowmen. Failed, okay. So fails to um, order the crossbowmen. So, I've lost track of what round we're on. I think we're on about round four or five now. Okay, so we go back to the purses. I think we're on round four. Okay, round five. Okay, round five. Let's see if it starts snowing. No, still no snow. Okay, so the crossbowmen can't make the wall. Okay, so the billmen are going to move forward again. Okay, um, they're not going to hamper the uh, archers. Actually, let's see if the archers are in range. The archers might be in range. You can get a shot off. Yes. Okay, good. Right, the archers are in range of the um, horsemen, the light horsemen. So the uh, archers are going to shoot at the light horse. Okay. So they're experts, so their shooting value goes from a 5 plus, sorry, a 6 plus to a 4 plus. Um, no, sorry, a, a five plus to a four plus. Uh, their order to shoot is a six plus, okay? 
and they hit on a 4 plus uh, 18 inches. So let's see how many uh, hits they can do. Let's see if they actually activate first. Okay. So, 6 plus to activate to shoot. 7, yes. Okay. The archers shoot. Right. So, line rampant. Uh, the unit, they've got 12 in the unit, so it's 12 dice to, to hit. Okay. They need 4 plus to do a wound. Um, they are slightly out of uh, range, I think, in terms. Yeah, they're more than 12 inches, so it's another plus one on the value to hit. So they're at five plus, basically, to hit. Okay, um, so their elite status is negated by the range, so anything over 12 inches is another um, uh, minus one to hit. Okay, so. Here we go. So, um, 12 dice at 4 plus. Ooh, nice. One, two, three, four, five. Five gone. Okay, five missed. Okay. Uh, oh, did I say 4 plus? Sorry, I meant 5 plus. Okay, they all miss. <laughs> okay, so three hits. Okay, three hits. Okay. So the way it works with this is basically, um, the, you look at the armor of the models they're shooting at. So they're shooting at light uh, cavalry, basically mounted sergeants. Their armor value is um, three, okay. So look at the arm value of the mount sergeant, which is three. And for every three hits um, with three armor, they lose a model. So they've been hit three times, so they lose one model. Okay. So from the back of the uh, mounted sergeant, you're here. Okay. You lose one model. Going to take that guy off there. Okay. So mounted, mounted sergeants lose a model. So. Uh, what happens now? Well, that means that they are battered. If you lose a, uh, um, a model, you become battered. So they need to make a courage roll. Mounted sergeants need to make a courage test. And it's 2d6 minus 1 for every casualty that you've taken throughout the entire battle. So they add up, they're cumulative throughout the battle. Okay. Um, they're still at full strength with 5 men. If they went down to 3, they'd be uh, half strength, so they'd be minus 1 again. The um, leader is within 12 inches, okay, got the, uh, the pikemen are quite close to them, so they get plus one. Okay, so it's 2d6, minus one for a casualty, plus one because their leader's close, okay, and their courage is their courage is four plus. So it's four plus, basically on 2d6 which is better than average okay four plus and 2d6 right if they fail the courage roll they will retreat okay half their movement so they'll go back they'll probably go back behind the pikemen and the um uh gunners okay so here we go four plus made it okay it was eight yeah okay so they made it four plus so they don't retreat, but they've taken a casualty. So they are battered, but not retreating, okay? Put a little skull there to show that they are a battered unit. So they take, so you take casualty. Um, oh, sorry, no, they don't become battered, okay? They made it, so they're not battered. They only become battered if they fail the test, um, and then they retreat, okay? Um, if they fail it by um, zero or less, then uh, basically they're routed, okay? Okay. Right. So they're not a battered unit, but they will have to keep taking a, bat a, a courage test Every time they, 
they basically take a casualty. Okay, so. So the archers have shot. So back to the purses again. So we're in turn five for the purses. So what we're going to do now. So the archers have shot. Um, the other archers are still out of range. They're more than 18 inches away. Okay, uh, we need to get these men at arms up, don't we? There's no reason Percy, Thomas Percy, sitting there, not moving. Okay, uh, men at arms need to move. So, to move five plus. Okay, nine. Okay. So, we can get these man-seed men-at-arms up, the, sorry, footmen at arms up, okay. Six inches straight up the road, okay. Not messing about, okay. Classic, classic um, Wars of the, Wars of the Roses style. You know, he wants to be in the middle of the battle. He doesn't want to be left out, okay. Back then, the nobles, they dismounted. Mostly in order to fight alongside the common soldiery to show that it was worth the battle. There was no chance of anybody running away. Okay. I'm very much um, about, you know, being right in the thick of it, which is why so many earls and nobles died during these battles. Okay. So he's actually successfully activated again. So he's now making some progress. He's going to leave those archers where they are. Um, he hasn't acti he's activated the... Uh, you can only make one activation per round. Okay, so he's going to try and activate the uh, billmen, okay, and move them up as well. So the billmen, five plus, okay, fail, double one. Okay, double one doesn't mean anything at this point, okay, um, but basically that's a five plus fail. Okay, so back to the mercenaries. So the mercenaries, now, I don't think the archers, I think that, you know, I think the archers can see those horsemen. I'm not going to order them to fire yet though, okay, I want them to get the full advantage. So I'm going to try and get the gunners up to the wall and I'm going to try and get the billmen to come up as well and get the crossbowmen. So crossbowmen 6 plus, okay that's a 9, okay so crossbowmen uh, make the wall Okay, so crossbowmen are now in defensive position against the wall. Okay, so the archers and the crossbowmen are now setting themselves up nicely to take what they perceive is going to be a charge from these heavy horsemen, which undoubtedly probably will be a charge from these heavy horsemen. So, let's see if we can get these uh, gunners ordered. Uh, six plus of them as well. Okay, yep, ten. They come up to the wall, okay. They are basically going to take the get into position ready to start. Yeah, easy. Hammering the They're gonna start shooting at the billmen if they make it up. Okay, so this is turning to quite a nice defensive position now for the mercenaries but unfortunately remember their objective is not to sit there and shoot all day long their objective is to get to the other end of the board now Percy seems to have forgotten that is the the job okay uh, of his men is to just sit there and prevent them so if he stayed where he was he might be okay but he's decided to attack in classic um, English aristocracy uh, foolishness okay so um all the mercenaries are getting activated quite nicely now so the only 
uh, unit that hasn't activated are the billmen at the back. So let's see if we can march these billmen forward so they can start to take some skill part in this battle. Five plus, yes, okay. So activation of the billmen. So we're going to move them up to, uh, well, as far as I can get them, basically. I'm going to march them up behind the, uh, the pikemen, try and get them into position. So... So there we go. So the Billman, six inches advance, moving up. Okay, they're going to try and go through that gap, see if they can start to engage Perses. So it's looking nice and defensive on the mercenary side. Right, okay. So that, they have just got one left to activate. They've just got their uh, the pikemen and the cavalry, so I'll leave the cavalry where they are, I think. I'm gonna move the pikemen around this wall. So the pikemen, basically foot sergeants, five plus to move, six. Okay, let's get them around this wall into position. Okay, around this wall and into position. So six inches. <clears throat> it could be quite nice. Yeah, everybody can get around the wall. So, these pikemen lining up nicely, ready to take the charge from the heavy cavalry. Okay. Now, in this, obviously, the pike in the uh, 15th century was nowhere near as effective as it was later on, okay, in the 17th century during the uh, um, English Civil War. Um, you know, pikes were nowhere near as long, okay, and the idea of cavalry charging pikemen probably wasn't as frightening. Plus, they're in full armour for a start, so, you know, the heavy cavalry of the uh, Wars of the Roses was still, to some extent, shock troops at that time, although they weren't really used in charges half as much as the uh, the French used their cavalry, okay? But it still be, could be an interesting uh, situation. So the final unit uh, for this turn five is the uh, the uh, light cavalry. So I'm gonna see if I can get them to uh, attack the archers. Um, if they're within 10 inches, they can uh, charge, okay? So let's see how close they are. No, they're way out. Okay, they're still too far away. So they're gonna basically move, I'm gonna try to move. They're gonna try to move five inches. Um, Basically, they're galloping forward, kind of building themselves up, ready for a charge. They want to try and punch through the 
Percy lines. Okay. So, mounted sergeants, move five plus. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. So, the. They are basically trying to make a bit of a difference. So they're going to just trot forward five inches. Okay. Um, they can all line themselves up into position, ready for a charge. Okay, so that's them. So they're now in position and they want to try and charge those archers, but obviously the billmen in the way so what we're thinking about here is let's hope those billmen fail an activation okay and we'll see what happens okay so that is everybody on the uh, mercenary side got to activate so the whole retinue acted so we've got the gunners up against the wall we've got the um, crossbowmen who have now taken position against the wall the pikemen are st sitting next to the wall ready to take the charge from the uh, heavy cavalry. The archers have got themselves up onto the hillside ready to shoot down onto the heavy cavalry if they charge. At the back, the billmen actually made their activation and they're starting to move up. So it's looking quite nice for the mercers. Nice defensive position. Okay, so we're anticipating that the next turn the heavy cavalry will charge. The archers and the crossbowmen can pour in fire and the uh, pikemen can basically delay them while the billmen try to get there. Maybe even the handgunners can get a little bit closer and start shooting at the billmen and the uh, archers on the Percy's side. Meanwhile, Percy's haven't done very much. They shot, they took a casualty off the uh, light cavalry of the, um, the scourers, okay? The archers on the hillside have done nothing, but they're there purely for defensive reasons. The men at arms, including Thomas Percy, have moved up, and the uh, billmen have moved up as well. So the billmen really want to kind of get into position to defend the archers against these um, horsemen. Thomas Percy, well, he just wants to get into the battle <laughs> at some point, um, and the cavalry are probably most likely going to charge these pikemen. Okay, so that's the end of turn five. That comes to the end of turn five. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a break there. I'm going to do this video in two or three parts because um, it is taking quite a long time. We're 42 minutes in now. Um, and, you know, quite a few things have happened. So the positions are very different than they were at the start. Nice defensive position from the mercenaries. Um, a distracting uh, charge to try to punch through from the mercenary light horsemen. Percy's really not done very much at all, okay, Thomas Percy's commands failed, okay, maybe he's not the great general he thinks he is, okay, so that's the end of part one and the end of turn five, I'll be back with the next part later on, bye.